it's hot, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, so this is a great one-on-one -on -one track introduction to USB drop assessment and overview. Uh, it's called Dropping USBs Like It's Hot. Uh, actually, not as hot as it is in this room. Um, a little bit about me, I'm Brad Thornton. Uh, I work for a company called IC Synergy. Uh, I'm a senior security engineer and penetration tester. Uh, you guys probably remember me from General Electric, and don't hold that against me. Uh, <laughs> I did privilege, I did an access management there. Come have a seat. Um, and then uh, also I've done consultative work for pen testing, like I'm doing now for another company. Um, I have a blog, and I've really been slacking on it. Uh, I'm going to promise I'm going to start updating it, but it's called Thorsec.com. Uh, I've got some certs like OSCP and a bunch of different acronyms, uh, Lifelong Learner, Breaker of Things. Um, so why this topic? Um, it's a great one-on-one -on -one track introduction. This is going to be a totally brief overview. Uh, we're going to keep it pretty low level, so nothing earth-shattering. There'll be a couple of, couple of sexy tricks in here, though, I'll show you. Um, and so when I first decided I want to do this talk and I submitted it and they put it on the list, I had tons of students and researchers reach out to me. Probably some of you sitting here today and um, I gave them some tactics and tricks and they went out and actually did this and gave me their feedback on it, um, which helped me even make this talk even better. And uh, I have never seen a start to finish guide on the internet and I'm hoping that's what this is going to be for you. Um, and then lastly, this one I hold pretty dear to my heart. I see a lot of uh, security companies, I mean like pen testing, consulting arms, uh, that don't really do USB drop assessments justice. So what that means is, is they're doing a physical assessment, which we'll talk about in a moment, but they'll just drop by a Walmart, pick up a couple of USBs, throw something on it, and sling them around and pretend like that's some type of adversarial simulation, and it's not. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to pick that out from now on. Um, I never like when people spend time times on the agenda when I'm about to tell you, but uh, foundational information, we'll give you an intro to USB drops, some research, um, popularity of it, go over how you would set this up uh, for your own organization, uh, types of devices, the inside, outside, and we'll wrap it up with defensive measures and conclusion. So where does this a USB drop stuff really fit in with your security program or attack framework? And it really lies in two sections, physical security and social engineering. So they want me to kind of tell you what physical security is. So it's protection of people, property, and physical assets from damage or unauthorized access. Many of you have probably went through CSSP and it's asking you to figure out which type of you know, fire extinguisher you should have or how far light should be from each other. And it's a lot more than that in practicality. Um, you're wanting to stop people from theft, vandalism, fire. Um, and when I've done physical security assessments, we'll talk about in a second, um, it's often overlooked through technology-focused stuff like, uh, you know, um, web application firewalls, even firewalls themselves, setting up stuff like PAM organizations, multi-factor. Um, they think they, they hire in someone to install their doors and they assume they did it properly and most of the time I find out they didn't. Um, I even come across things like uh, they're installing security systems facing the window. So as an attacker, I can sit outside and wait for it to come off the time lock maybe and break into the company, which has happened several times. <laughs> um, so the assessments can take many forms here. So um, physical security assessments is going to be a lot more hands-on. This is where you're going to be doing the, the spy bank heist type stuff or maybe you're breaking in at nighttime. Um, through maybe that, that uh, security system that's facing the window, um, maybe doing some push bar bypassing, going in there, setting up command and control or something that radios home to you. Or it could be you're calling someone's badge out there in the parking lot and you're walking in broad daylight. A security walkthrough, however, is a lot more, uh, more like an audit type, type role. So you'll walk in with a, a facilities person or so, you know, security officer and you'll walk through and say, hey, this door's not installed properly, you should probably do this hey, you don't have this type of deterrent or you know, modification to what you have as you should. Um, and how this relates to USBs, or USBs are physical devices. I'm sure everyone here knows what a USB is. Uh, I have some pictures in here in case you don't. <laughs> um, but you drop them on location. Um, so that's the physical aspect of it. So social engineering, this is a huge topic and I feel like I'm not doing it justice here. Um, but this could be a talk in of itself. Uh, that's the art of manipulating people to essentially do something that they really shouldn't do or is not in their best interest. Um, it is 100% an art. I've seen some people, like Kevin Mitnick, for instance, you guys probably have heard of him, 
they are pretty much are to seven. I found that many times people were kind of born with this being a little easier for them or not. Uh, it doesn't mean that you're a liar or anything. It just means that maybe in your head you can kind of compartmentalize it a little better. But uh, I don't want to just read to you slides, but the one I want to focus on is baby. Dangling something in front of the victim to act on. Textbook example, USB drop assessment. I'm going to put that USB on the floor. Someone's going to come across it and say, hmm, I wonder what's on that. And so that'll be that baby portion. So USB drops, what is it? Load the USB with malicious content and you hope your victim's going to plug it in and do something that they really shouldn't be doing. Um, why would someone want to do that? To get access to your network or deploy some type of malicious code to your network. Um, how they do it, there's more than just three bullets, I assure you. But um, you can have the user plug it in and interact with it some way, maybe through some type of macro. Um, they could use a hit device, which we'll cover, uh, where it automatically starts executing code. Uh, or even you could do a phishing style attack, and you see this every once in a while where people will make a fake login screen, they put in their credentials, and it really just radios back home to me, and I get to scrape those credentials out. Um, as far as assessments go, you don't traditionally do just a USB assessment if you're having uh, someone out of house come in and conduct one for you. It's usually, uh, or traditionally done during a physical security assessment as an add-on, or maybe they include it in the service. Um, as with anything in life, the more you customize it, the more it's going to cost you. Um, but to give you a, kind of a, a reference, USB drop assessments in and of themselves, just by alone, out of all the services that most pen testing companies offer, it's one of the cheaper ones. Um, you can usually do this in a couple hours or a day or so. So why is it important? USB drop attacks happen. Um, we'll talk about that here in a little bit, but um, uh, there's probably one going on literally as we're speaking, I'm sure. Um, and the big, big one on this slide is unsophisticated attackers can carry this out. It's not just nation state. Um, as you'll find out, nation states do use this as a tactic. But, um, you know, the guy down the street's bored because he's out from summer break and he can go on YouTube and look up how to do this and then he's throwing stuff out in your organization and messing your whole week up. Um, the best experience, and I truly stand behind this, is employee awareness and security training. That's what a USB drop assessment will do. Raise that awareness, make sure you have proper training in place. Um, great for new and uh, mature security programs. So I've worked on some clients that are, uh, you know, Fortune 10, and uh, you know, they've spent a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of people working on this, and I've been very successful with USB drop assessments. Um, and it's not necessarily because they're bad, but it's just one facet of a huge security problem. This is only one type of attack out of, you know, thousands. Um, you can measure training effectiveness, and really what this is for is like if you have some type of documentation classification or segregation of duties, maybe HR shouldn't be looking at accounting stuff, vice versa. Um, or maybe you have confidential and someone that doesn't have confidential shouldn't be looking at it, stuff like that. Um, and as with anything, it's great to refresh people's attention to security dangers. I uh, recommend that each organization do this at least annually. Uh, depending on your type of uh, industry, you might want to be doing this quarterly. Um, so popularity. So I'm sure many of you have heard of Stuxnet. Um, I, uh, I guess I'll put the air quotes. Allegedly, some type of government, like that we may or may not be in right now, uh, was part of setting back our trans nuclear program by decades. Uh, and it all started with a, a very a simple USB in a parking lot. Um, it was titled The World's First Digital Weapon. Um, it's kind of a breakdown of how it allegedly took place. Um, but essentially, just that day, they, they threw it in a parking lot, they decided this was the best way, they went and did some searching, finding things, some really cool zero-day stuff they did. Uh, found some device and they started making it uh, report um, false information about false readings until it was too late and it was basically just destroying this investment plan. Um, you hear about people putting them in people's mailboxes. Large corporations accidentally, I hope accidentally, sending malware to their their, uh, their employees or customers. Um, USB killers, we'll talk about that in a moment. They're plugging these things in, destroying devices. Um, this is something that happened not too long ago. Um, Secret Service agent threw a USB drive in while he was hanging out, um, doing something he shouldn't have been doing. It's a pretty good read if you get a chance to read that one. Um, you see it in the media. Mr. Robot, I won't spoil this for you, but they may or may not have put a USB in a parking lot to get access to a secure facility. Don't want to ruin it for you. Um, and then the dental association spread malware. Like, if you can't trust your dentist, who can you trust? <laughs> so, you know, just like, so you see this all the time. 
Um, when I first was thinking about some public research to include in this, one that really popped out to me was a black hat talk done in 2016. Well, it just does dropping USB drive really work. Here's a hint, it does. Um, what they did was they took three, around 300 USBs, dropped them on a campus, um, and then they included these HTML files that just beacon back home. And then at the end of it, they offered like an optional survey for them uh, to kind of get some additional information. Like, why did you plug this in? What were you know? What was your intentions for this type of stuff? Um, after dropping it, the first one beaconed back home in six minutes. That means they actually picked it up, plugged it into a device, and opened something up within six minutes of dropping. <coughs> Come on in. Um, so up here, you'll see that 45% actually phoned home. That means they plugged it in and executed something. Um, that's almost half. Um, and then down here in these charts, um, uh, USBs that had physical keys attached to them, like my key ring, they had the highest success rate, and the location was parking lots. Um, so that brings me to my experience with this. Um, yes, USB drop attacks work. Um, I've done mine primarily in the corporate world, not so much in academia like they did their testing in. And my results were a lot worse, I guess, for uh, you know the corporate world, good for attackers. But first run attempts I've done, I usually get 50 to 75 percent. I've gotten um, much higher than that, like 100 percent before. Um, but I've noticed each organization or industry has, been, has different cultures and they have security awareness levels, maybe different from a hospital compared to like a retail store. <coughs> Um, so you got to kind of figure out where you are in that. Um, USBs and trust and locations that have something to do with your company or a personalized touch is usually going to work against untrained employees. Uh, my hottest locations were the lobby, turnstiles, parking lot, and for some super gross unknown reason, bathrooms. People trust things from bathrooms. <laughs> if you know why, you come tell me because I don't. Man, I don't want to know. But um, I'm batting real high and throwing something in the bathroom, and people are like, oh, my goodness, it's a USB. i got to plug it in and see what's on it. Um, super gross. Um, but uh, great for attack. Um, hottest files, resumes, budgets, payrolls, anything mentioning confidential or private, usually if it involves money or some way that they're an employee can peer into maybe how much their coworkers is getting paid, maybe something about a budget for some particular group, all of those real good things that people love. Um, once again, I briefly mentioned I shared tactics with people that have been getting very similar results. Um, if you end up doing this, hit me up with the results, whether bad or good. Um, it may work for you, maybe it don't. So you want to run your own assessment. So the roadmap for this is pretty cut and dry. Um, you get your goal, you get the USBs, you modify them in some way, you load up your, your malware or whatever you want to put on it, set you up a web server so it can radio back to you and you can catch it. Um, then you drop them, analyze the results, and one of the, the, the key pieces is this one right here, take action. I couldn't tell you how many times that I go and do assessments for companies that are paying me twenty, forty, sixty thousand dollars and then I come back and do the same thing maybe the next quarter or next year and they've done nothing. They're literally just giving me money to show them how screwed up they are and saying, you did a good job, you really screwed us up. <laughs> Let's do the same time next week, right? So that happens a lot. And I'm sure each of you probably have your own experience with that um, and your own, you know, your own jobs. Uh, but definitely focus. I mean, if you're going to do this, I think it's fun. Um, you may not. Um, but it costs money. It takes time. You could be doing something else. If you're going to do this type of assessment, do something about it. Uh, and then rinse and repeat. This is a very iterative process. So you're going to have to make some decisions when you set this up. You're going to have to set up what your goals are going to be, uh, who your targets are going to be, how many USBs you want to drop, what they're going to look like, where they're going to go, uh, and then what happens when we actually plug them in. So I broke down some questions to help you answer those uh, decisions that you have to make. So um, what do you want to measure? Could be security levels. Maybe you're putting things like private, confidential, secret, top secret, whatever. Uh, or maybe you just want general awareness for your, your employees. That's a totally valid reason. Uh, and a valid goal. Um, a pre have you previously conducted a USB drop assessment in the past? If you have, you should build on it. If I went in and did an assessment and I saw that I was that 90% people plugged them in, I did a training and I get 90% again, that training was not effective. Um, so make sure you're building on that. Um, do you want to be sneaky or obvious? And this is kind of that sales te technique where it's like bait and switch or going in the face. So if you want to be secret, maybe you can do something they really like secretive and it looks really personalized and they, they may even get infected and not even know it. 
or you could do where you're saying, hey, this is super obvious. I'm saying malware.exe, do not plug this in. I'll screw up your life. And people will plug it in anyways. <laughs> I, I'm telling you that. Um, I mean, there's been like some times we were like literally messing with malware and we've like put it in a container and say, hey, do not touch this. And people are like, oh, it's a USB. It might be something cool on it. Uh, people do it. You know those people. I know you do. Um, uh, how many do you want to drop? So I get this question probably more than anything else, other than what's the craziest story that I've got. Um, essentially, you want to have enough that people will come across of them. You want to have that personal experience where they get to make a decision. I see a USB. I can pick it up. I can leave it alone. And if I pick it up, do I follow my company policy, which may be to turn into IT, uh, IT department, or do I plug in my computer, or do I go load video games on, or whatever you want to do, right? Um, that you want them to have that experience. So I always recommend at least doing five, just so you can get a baseline. Uh, and you know, if you do two of them, and, and you know, maybe two people plug it in, that's 100%. That makes you look really bad. But what if you drop 10 and only two people did it? The, the statistics are a lot different. Um, I usually, as a rule of thumb, go by people of 15%. If you have a huge facility, you might need more. You know, if you have a huge facility and you drop three of them, people may not even come across of it. Um, so you, you kind of have to use a little common sense with that. Um, do you want to target a specific role or individual or group? If yes, you want to figure out where they're located. If they're in the West Wing, don't drop the SVs in the East Wing. Um, and do you want to obtain control of the devices or just report statistics? 95% of the time, you're just going to be reporting statistics. And in this talk, that's what we're going to talk about. But if you're doing like a red team exercise, you're by all means, control the device. You know, get it done, get those shells. Um, what type of technology do your targets use? If you work there, you probably know what type of computer that your coworkers use, like a Windows or a Mac. If you're a pen tester, a tar uh, something that I like to do is I like to drive around the parking lot. And something I love about Mac users, they love to tell you how much they love Mac. So I'll go and drive around there, and I'll look and see all these little apples all over the place. And it doesn't necessarily mean that. What's up, man? Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that they um, they use Mac in their work life, but it doesn't mean they don't. If I see maybe 20 or 30 of them, I'll probably throw some payloads on there that that'll work with Mac. Um, what do you want to happen when you plug the USB in? Uh, you can take them to your company policy. Love that idea. Immediate teachable moment. You plug this in and it says, hey, you weren't supposed to do that. This is what you should do. So that's a really good, good time to do that. You can do a fake login screen where you're harvesting their credentials. Um, you could only report and don't give them anything. You can do it if you want. I probably wouldn't. Um, you can do some cat videos, Rick roll them. The sky's the limit. I uh, probably wouldn't make it too fun because then they're going to want to. They're going to want to plug in USB so they're entertained. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, and what do you plan on do with results? I won't belabor that again, but please just do some. If you put I'm going to do this and it's not nothing, then you're probably on the right track. Um, so types of devices. So there are a ton out there. And while I was researching this and just running and talking to hackers, I keep learning all kinds of new stuff. Um, Kind of the three main ones are malware-enabled USBs. These are your regular USBs. Um, there's a picture of one up there uh, <laughs> and down here. Um, and you're going to enable them with malware through, you know, maybe an uh, uh, infected may work or Excel document. A hid device, so human interface device. These are super cool. They're a little more expensive, um, but these get read in as maybe like a keyboard or a CD-ROM drive or something. They usually just start executing code on your machine as soon as you're plugging it in. Uh, I have a lot, a lot of success with these. Um, and then USB killers. I have never once had anyone tell me that they wanted me to use this because what it does is you plug it in and it starts generating all this power and does a surcharge into the device and it's, it's messed up. It's done. Um, they're super cool though. I think mean, it's a great idea. But, um, <laughs> and I really want to play with them. I'm kind of scared though because I know me. I'm like, I, I bet you it won't and then it's going to do it. Um, but they're a lot of fun. Um, and then there's these other devices. And uh, we'll use the air quotes again. Some certain government acronyms may or may not have released things. Uh, Turn Up School was from the NSA playground. So it's not directly from possible leak from the NSA. Uh, so I don't want anyone keeping tabs on me for that. So, um, But they have some really cool like James Bond type stuff where it's like um, uh, 
like phone charger cords that have built-in wireless USB technology. You start plugging stuff in, it's radio and stuff, like data back from your computer. Super cool stuff. Um, you could spend forever talking about it. But what about backdoor media streaming devices? So like uh, Amazon Fire Stick or Homecast. What's stopping someone from backdooring one of those, plugging into a, you know, maybe a TV on your corporate network, and then they're, they're raising hell, right? Um, I think that's a super cool idea. Imagine like you're a vendor and you gift it to someone and as an attacker, I'm just immediately thinking, these are all these cool things I could probably do with it. Or if, even if you're in college or somewhere and you plug one up in the cafe area, somebody's like, oh, he's, he's a nice guy. He's going to share his, his Amazon account with us. No. <laughs> so, so that one's a really cool one. I really like the idea. So you can be as creative as you want. Um, so the physical appearance. So this is always kind of the fun stuff. And this first one is the one that I love more than probably anything else. Um, it's great to release your frustrations on if you had a bad day at work. Um, go ahead and mess these things up. A used USB looks a lot more interesting. I see so many like pen testers, they just go to Walmart, they pick them up, they start throwing them around, they look brand new, some of them still have package and stuff on them. Um, go ahead and tear that thing up. Uh, I like dragging against bricks or rocks or something. <laughs> a really cool trick is I scuff it up, you can kind of see it on here a little bit. I scuff them up and I take like um, ink from a pen throw it on there and kind of smudge it around and it looks like it's been, you know, it's been through hell and back, right? There's going to be some good stuff on that one <laughs> because it's been used. I want my, my victim to think that, hey, there's actually something on here. And that's a great way to do that. Um, so you'll have a lot of fun doing that if you just do it. Um, mixed branded styles. Uh, you see this a lot where people are like, They'll do assessment two or three times, and they have the same green USBs, and they're like, oh, there's Brad with his green USBs again trying to trick us, you know? Or they'll like dump like three of them in the same room, they all look the same, and you're like, eh, something might be up with that. Mix your brands and styles. Some of them are cheaper, more expensive. They have like Kingston or Patriot, you know, these little swirl ones, and the push ones, and the ones that have tops, and they have logos on them. They all, I mean, make it fun. Uh, and what's cool about that is, is you might imitate one that a potential uh, future attacker will use against you, and they might remember it. They might be like, oh, they put a Batman logo on that one. I know Batman's not good at plugging my computer, so <laughs> maybe you just prevent an attack there. And then labeling, it goes back to put an IP department on there, or if maybe you're at a college, put exam answers and some kids and think that his life's going to be better. It will. <clears throat> um, so here's a couple of different examples. There's my Batman one. Uh, I have a lot of fun with that one. Uh, so the assessments part is a lot of fun, and I think this, if you, if you accessorize these things, this is where you, you kind of go from the level five to 10. Uh, I've gotten, especially doing car keys, oh my goodness. People, if you put a car key on a USB, somebody's gonna plug it in, and it might be because they wanna be nice, right? Maybe they're like, especially, um, I just found out they call receptionist lobby ambassadors. That was like a thing I just learned while I was doing research with this. Um, so that's cool. That's that's side note, um, but they like they like to be super helpful. At least they're supposed to be, right? Um, and they they see a you know a, a car key with a USB attached to it, and they're like, I don't want to stay here late and have to wait for somebody to come back for this. I want them to be able to get in their car and leave. They're gonna plug it in there and try to open something up, like maybe a resume to figure out who owns it. Um, get a great results on car keys, lanyards, local sports team. I just got back from from North Carolina. Um, Keys to your house, key fobs, you see there's a multi-factor token there, grocery store cards, I mean, you name it, it's just, I mean, you can make it as personal, personalized as you want. Uh, and then about color, so I get this question, actually it's more than you probably think, but it's more than I thought I would. Um, and it's about color psychology, what color should these be? Because when you, when you go and order them off Amazon, you try to live life on the edge and save some money by bulking them all together, what color should I get? Um, People have done a lot of research on color psychology. You can look this up pretty easy. But you see things like blue, trust, calm, and safe. That's what you want to encourage. Uh, things like yellow here, caution, fear, anxiety. Not so much. Um, if I had to pick a color that I thought I, I, I would shy away from more than any, it's probably yellow. Um, things like pink, purple, uh, feminine colors, definitely people like to, they trust feminine colors for some reason. They think that women aren't you know, malicious attackers. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of them that are. So uh, black's always a safe one. Most USBs are black anyway, so it just kind of makes it blend in. Yeah. So highlights, Personal, personalization is key. I, I know a couple people, they like to make little characters in their heads, <laughs> like 
this guy, you know, he works in construction, and he likes the, you know, the Patriots or whatever, and then they go in and they try to set up for what a keyring might look like for this person, right? Um, that's a good way to do it. I usually just try to pick different ones depending on the target I'm going for. Um, and demographics, some, some companies have a lot of younger people, some a little bit older, you know, different types of people. So you kind of just gauge it based on what their uh, company culture is. Uh, brand color, I mean, company colors and brands trump everything. If your company is bright yellow with that, and your logo is a big exclamation point that says danger on it, please use it on your USB. People trust things that are familiar with them, and if they think it's got all the bells and whistles and signs of what the company would use, you're probably going to win. Car keys, I won't believe that, but I'm, just throw, go on Amazon, I mean, go on uh, Craigslist or go on uh, eBay, look up some old like Honda key, get those really easy, go and buy a couple of them and just put them on there and people just eat it up. Uh, once again, feminine setups, they seem to build the most trust. I get a lot of uh, success out of feminine builds. So where should you put these things at? I've talked about it a little bit before, but you want to figure out where your target's going to be and that's where you should drop it. I highly recommend common areas. Um, usually this kind of helps build, because I've, I've dropped some on desks before, like I might hop in your de desk, wait not there, and just drop one, and you get back and you're like, what the heck is this? Um, it becomes a lot bigger thing for them. If you do it in common areas, they think, oh, someone dropped this. So you can kind of get the sympathy up there, so that's good. Um, so floors near copiers, break rooms, front rooms, conference rooms. I really like floors near doors and turnstiles, because you're, you're stopping, you're having to interact with something, maybe you're pulling your badge out. They think you accidentally dropped your USB there. Um, and then bathrooms, let's not even go there again. But <laughs> super gross, um, it works. And then parking lots, um, those are really good. You saw in that public, uh, public research that that actually was the highest. And what's scary about that is, is they're usually not secure. I mean, a lot of these places you see up here, they're usually after you've badged in or after you went through some type of security procedure. Parking lots, not so much. Uh, you can pretend like you're walking your dog maybe. Uh, you could just drive down the road and start slinging them out there. That's perfectly acceptable too. So it's a pretty dangerous area. Um, I usually always get somebody from the parking lot. Um, <coughs> so um, branding, this is a big piece. So this is the software side. Um, I spent a lot of time here. Um, as you know, I, I worked for a company here in, in Richmond at one time, who we won't, we won't mention again, but uh, they think a lot of themselves. Uh, they have their, they've trademarked their own font their own colors. And so that's a, I love that. As, as an attacker, I'll go on their website and I'll see what type of their company culture might be, right? Um, I'll use lingo like fast fail or synergy or DevOps. Everybody talks about stuff like that now. Um, I could use that in some of my files and my names, right? Uh, logos, making the colors, um, all those good type things. So you want to use their brand, and most, most companies have a brand, and hopefully it's a strong brand. Um, then you can you know, use that against them, because uh, you're attackers still. Uh, and then file names. Uh, I promise if you put malware.exe enough people, some, some super cool person's going to open it up. Um, but as of course, if you're looking at these two files, you would probably feel a little more safe for opening up 2018 Q3 budget XLS. And you notice that it doesn't have like an M on it, meaning that macros are in there. Um, that's not always the case. You can trick it. But just looking at it, um, you would probably be more likely to open that up. Um, so for payloads, so in this talk, we're just phoning home. I'm not trying to commandeer anybody's device. We're just, I want to see if you plug it in, who plugged it in, when they plugged it in, and hopefully ask them why. Um, and there's a couple ways of doing that. There's a huge laundry list, but here's some common ones. Uh, Microsoft Office macros, super common, especially in the workplace. Uh, malicious PDFs, executables. This really cool desktop.any trick I'll show you here in a minute. And these rubber ducky scripts, that's a type of hit device you can buy from Hack5. I'm not name dropping, it's just one that I've recently used. Um, there's a lot of good products out there. Uh, but they have their own little scripting language that kind of makes it easy to deploy things. Uh, and probably the, the piece that I think will probably be most helpful for you guys is, um, I'm going to try and sell my blog again. <laughs> uh, on my blog, I'm going to be releasing some scripts, payloads, and some kind of kits that basically you could go in, download a file or files. You can maybe change the color, throw your logo in there, kind of customize it, and throw it on a USB, and I've done all the coding and all the back, all the legwork for you to make it really easy um, and kind of expand what type of files that you're putting on a USB. So definitely check back. Um, Life has gotten in the way. I just got over having bronchitis, so uh, which is a good cue for me to drink some water. Uh, but uh, I should have them there hopefully in a, a week or two. Um, so 
how it typically works, it's pretty, pretty simple. You hit a device, a user plugs in a USB to a device, it's going to automatically run. It might reach out to my uh, attacking machine and I might tell it to do something or just say, hey, go to this website. Um, and then the user interaction option, this is another option. They plug in a USB into the device. They're going to interact somehow when they connect to that device, like maybe en enable a macro perhaps. Uh, it's going to reach out to my attacking machine and I'm going to do, uh, do my thing. So you probably ask yourself, how do you keep track of it all when I'm dropping 50, 60, 100 of them? And I use a unique key. So let's just say the first one was a green USB and I dropped it in the conference room. And on this device I had two files. One was a Word document, one was an Excel document. I could make that call back to my attack, attacking device right here. When it calls me, it might say uh, green USB conference or green USB Word, so I know that it came from the Word file, so I can actually figure out which file they actually ran off the USB. And that's a really good, easy option. Um, you can organize it however you like. But, uh, I'll show you some examples here in just a moment. Uh, so I love using hits. They're, they're super fun. Um, this one right here was from one that I actually used a rubber ducky from Hack5. I uh, used a rubber ducky script, um, and what it did was when they plugged in the device, it would just automatically open up a browser. It would hit my, uh, my web server that I have, and then I would forward them. In this case, I forwarded them to the US CERT uh, security tip that says, hey, you should use caution when you find USB drives. Uh, this would be a great spot to put your company policy at. Um, so they, it's a, a teachable moment. You plug it in. They get some says, hey, you really shouldn't have done that. That's okay. Here's your, here's your warning. Um, but I have a lot, of, a lot of luck with hits. They don't really have to interact with the device. All you have to do is just plug it in. Um, they get read in this keyboard, so it's, a lot of time, it's good to bypass some of the security mechanisms that when people are blocking USBs. I mean, who's, who's blocking keyboards these, these days, right? So another one, uh, I've actually used this, and I have a lot of luck with this one. And this is a, a macro-enabled Office Word document. And so I call it a resume. A lot of times these good Samaritans, they want to uh, you know, figure out who, who this USB belongs to. What better way than have their resume? Um, so what I did in this one is I actually took a resume. I think it might have been mine. Um, and then I fuzzed it. I fuzzed the image, and I just pasted the image over it. And then I put in something that looked similar to this. Uh, from Microsoft, even though it really wasn't, that says, hey, you need to disable all these security features so that you can see the picture. Um, because I want you to disable your security features, um, so why not just ask you to do it? Um, get a lot of, a lot of good uh, results from this. And up here to the right, this is what you'll see on your web server. So you're going to see an IP address, so most likely they're plugging this into their workstation. Um, and since you know you have network people on staff, I'm sure you can figure out where the IP came from. Um, and then you're going to have uh, a date and time stamped there. And then you'll see that USB green section over there. That's what I labeled this one. I knew that I dropped the green USB in this place. And maybe I only put one file on this one, so I didn't. I, you know, I didn't you know what type of it. It was a Word document. Here's another example for an, an Excel one. Um, a budget, and I usually like zero these out, or I might talk about layoffs, or I might talk about some team that maybe they're, you know, I found out that they're really releasing this new fancy thing, and probably other teams are jealous they're going to have some huge budget, and I'm not going to get anything, I'll put something like that in there. And then I throw like a logo where it says logo here, and I just highlight, hey, you must enable macros to view these figures. And people do it. I mean, they, you know, they, they build in security where you literally have to click a button to go around it. People just do it if you ask them to do it. Um, and same thing, we're reaching back to us. This one right here, is, this is sexy, this is fun. Um, so there's this thing called desktop.ini, and it's a Windows function where basically you can have, <coughs> you can have uh, customized icons on folders and files, and so what you do is you set it where it says, hey, I got this really cool customized uh, uh, you know, icon, and I store it in this desktop menu, and I point it, and I say, hey, you need to go to this address to go get it. So what it does is, is it actually goes and reaches out to my attacking machine, which is great, right? But then it tries to authenticate against me through SMB. And what do you get when you do that? I get a password hash. I get their IP address, domain, and username, and then I get their password hash, which then I'm going to go and... Oh, cool. You got a question? Uh, one slide back, you did a mental autocomplete, that's you must enable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> and so, they'll go, I'll go and crack this password, 
Um, I'll go and crack this password, and then I'll go and authenticate to maybe they have uh, their VPNs not multi-factored. Maybe they have OWA that's not multi-factored. I can log in, check their email, get on the network. Um, if this does fail and you have SMB blocked externally, which you all should, there's no reason why you should have SMB going out, uh, it'll fail to web dev and it'll look very similar to this right here. And so highlights here, pretendance a real assessment, what it would look like. Um, incorporate what you want people to train on. So maybe you have you just did this export controlled environment, maybe it's private HR data, you can include that. And exploit human curiosity. And some people might say some of the stuff is kind of cheating. You're putting physical key, you know, cars on, you know, like uh, keys on there for cars and things. Um, your attacker is not concerned with ethics, I promise you. Um, they, uh, they can cheat all they want, and that means you should too, because you want to simulate an actual attacker. So, uh, running out of time here, so I'm going to rush through some of this stuff. So, the results. So, when you're measuring these things, you're going to measure things like how many devices were plugged in, how many devices were actually handled appropriately, right? Maybe the devices were left in place and no one had a chance to have that the decision to pick it up or not. Um, compare it to your other assessments, figure out where you need to pivot at. Um, maybe your training's been effective, maybe it's not. Maybe you just released a new AV and you want to test it out, you know, whatever the case may be. Uh, and decide on mitigating controls and their effectiveness. Once again, you can kind of <coughs> measure that. This is the most important piece in this whole slide, I think. Um, providing feedback and training. You should not single people out. Just because someone plugs in a malicious USB does not mean they're dumb. It means that they're untrained. And if you're responsible for the security of your company, which everyone in this room, if you have a job, you're responsible for the security of your company, then you should be teaching people what they should be doing. Um, and you should praise those that are <coughs> responsible. You should, you know, if someone, if, you, if it's to hand in a, to the IT department, shake their hand, say good job, give them a pizza party, give them a $5 gift card to Starbucks or something, do something. You want to enable them to keep doing it. And then you're always going to have these fun habitual offenders. Um, and I mentioned escalate inconvenience, and there's going to be people that are going to fail this every single time. And I get that so much when I do these. They're like, you know, uh, Brad, he just keeps plugging in all these USBs and running everything, and we have to keep reformatting his, you know, his computer and all this yada yada yada. Escalate inconvenience, meaning that the first time I say, hey, we did this assessment, this is our results, this is what you should be doing, kind of go over your training. He does it again, maybe a 10 minute video, maybe he needs to watch something online that you find. Then maybe he does it again, maybe he watches an hour one and maybe he has to take an exam after it. <laughs> and if he keeps doing it, then maybe he needs to get a different job where he can't really hurt your company or maybe he's too big of a risk for you. Um, and I don't think you should just give up on people that easily. Um, but you know, you'd be, you'd be deciding to that. Um, do it over again, compare, very iterative process. Um, so defensive measures, uh, unfortunately I'm running out of time here, but I highly recommend these top ones. Awareness and training is your best defense. Um, having a policy set forth to set that expectation. I can't really tell an employee they did something wrong when I don't tell them what I want them to do, right? So having a policy in place that says if you come across a USB or something malicious, this is what you should do with it. Um, and this awareness training is like running this. Um, you also can disable USB ports, and that's kind of a... Not a one-size-fit-all solution. Uh, I've seen people put glue in them. I've seen people electronically disabled. They use uh, different, um, like SOFOs and different uh, different solutions to do that. Um, maybe you only do this on really high critical machines. Maybe you just totally disable them. Maybe put glue in them. You could do something like that. It doesn't have to be every single bar every single person in your company can have a USB port. Um, these other ones, they're good to have, and you should be doing them. But there's there's workarounds to all these things. AV, you should have AV. Disable and auto run, having GPOs only allow specific hardware IDs, uh, things of like that, but you should not rely on that because there's ways to get around this. Uh, and I, I went to a customer site not too long ago and they had this thing called a malware scanning kiosk. Um, super freaking weird. Um, this guy's shirt's freaking awesome right here. To, you know, what does that say again? Flash uh, drive? Yeah, flash drives. Don't care about firewall rules. <laughs> I did not tell him to wear that. <laughs> but, um, but this malware scan device, they just walk up and you're like, hey, I have this thing, it might have malware on it, and I'll plug it in there. And he goes, oh, it's clean. Well, what if it's not malware? What if it's something that's malicious that happens not be malware? Maybe it's something else. If you do that, they immediately think, oh, this is great. I can plug this anywhere I want to. They just try, and it's, it's, this, it's this false confidence that you, you create there. So that hasn't won me over. I'm not a fan of it. You may feel otherwise, but um, I don't like it. I just don't like it. 
Uh, so health and tax here. Let's see. Okay, cool. We're going there. Uh, company policy sets the expectations. Tell them what you want them to do. Give them the tools to be successful and for your company to be secure. Uh, measure your progress, or even lack thereof, and constantly change. I've seen some people run these assessments, they get the same results next time, but then they find out they hired, they doubled their staff, so those people were never even trained. Um, some people have a tough time, make it inconvenient for them. Uh, you can't, you can lead a horse to water, can't make them drink, right? So I can come up here and I can do this assessment, and then, you know, Brad comes along and starts plugging them in again. You need to have a plan on how you should handle that, and it's not just firing them. <coughs> Even if you don't like them and you want them gone, uh, do it for another reason. Don't do it because of me. Uh, don't use me as your scapegoat um, to get rid of your, your horrible coworker. Um, but you know, definitely make it community. Train them more. Maybe they learn in a different style. Maybe this training is not really fit for them. Um, and then get crafty. You can get super creative. I've seen some hackers do some really amazing things, very uh, crafty things, especially like people doing, uh, they're having mergers in their business, uh, news outlets releasing certain stuff, and they use that in the attacks. Uh, this is what attackers actually do. They see on the internet and they're just like, oh, I bet you I got an idea. I could do this to this company. It'll probably work. Um, they have to be right once. You have to be right every single time. So definitely mix it up, get creative. Uh, and this doesn't have to be difficult. I'm doing a whole talk on it just to kind of introduce you to it. This is pretty simple stuff. You don't have to get, you know, spend weeks and weeks doing this. Just do something. Just try to help raise the awareness. Something is better than nothing. Um, rotate from various social engineering and physical assessments. So what I mean by this is you might do a USB assessment, wind drop assessment this, this month. Maybe next month maybe you're calling the help desk trying to get a, an RSA token when you don't even work for the company. Maybe you're doing a physical assessment at you know, site A and then doing a fishing exercise in site B. All these cool things you could do. Um, and then with limited resources, start with people in high quality positions first. Maybe you don't have a lot of money, maybe you don't have a lot of time. Getting those people that could really probably screw up your business if they were compromised, shoot for those first. Uh, and so final words, USB drops are a solid attack vector. It works. Um, I've never personally done a USB assessment that someone did not plug in and run something. Ever. It's always worked. Um, and that's scary. You should, I mean, hopefully that resonates with you because it certainly does with me. Um, you should be educating your employees. Um, just because they plug it in does not mean that they're dumb. It means that you haven't done your job to train them appropriately. Um, and this doesn't have to be a difficult task, once again. Uh, and this one holds very dear to my heart. Um, I see it a lot. Uh, some of the students, they were getting some help from some pen testers and they were getting really bad results. And they just they weren't putting in the time to effectively simulate an adversary. If you're going to hire someone outside to do this for you, make sure they're doing some of these things. They should be asking you questions or at least on the internet doing some research. If they come back and all their USBs look the same, they got packaging on them, send them home. I mean, you might have to pay them a little bit, but just send them home. You're not going to effectively simulate an adversary. And if you're not going to do that, what's the point of them being there? So that's it. Thanks for your time, guys.